and welcome to another This Sporting Life and a special, special welcome to everybody on either side of the Friendship Bridge by G. Fancy being able to drive from Singapore all the way to Beijing without getting out of your car. Hooli dooly. Talk about a dream coming true. Now, later in the show, one of Australia's leading sports minds will be joining us at the card table here, perched as it is on the abyss of all action. But for now, let's get a big man on the munch, on a bone, simply by asking rampaging Roy Slavin, what was the highlight of your week? Yes, thanks very much, Ace Look, I stayed up all night, last night, to watch the highlight of my week. That is the US Masters with Sharky cruising very, very comfortably. One off the pace, or two off the pace after the first round, one after the second, one after the I thought, hello, you're the shark, this is it. Here he is into this Zen, Taoism, Buddhism, Bruce Lee sort of fusion, all encapsulated under one bloody hat with a handful of clubs. And uh, he, he done it. He, he let us all down. He let Asia down. He, he let Australia down. He let Queensland buddy well down where he comes from. He left surfing down. I was, look, I, I, I'm bugger to find out. I don't know what to do with the bloke. I, uh, I haven't even been in touch. I, I couldn't do it. That's well, been a, it was really a low light, I suppose. Yes, let's look on the highlight. I've just cleared the 1994, the year of the shark. He won at Augusta this morning. There was a special fifth round laid on by the committee there, and Shark won. Congratulations, Shark. Put all those negative thoughts out of your mind. Shark has won. Australia back on top. Speaking of people on top, Mike yeah. Atherton. Mike mm. Atherton had a tremendous relationship <coughs> going with a, with, a, with a very, very attractive person called Susie Carmen. Mm. Unfortunately, they've had to break up due to the pressures of cricket. Now, I don't know how many people would remember Mike Atherton. Mm. We've got some footage of Mike at the crease here. Roy, take us through it. I know you know Mike's gear very yes. well. Here he, he is. Here's Mike. He's the bloke in the helmet batting. Look at that beautiful cover drive. Classic copy book cover drive. Very, very attractive. And we'll see him in a minute, I think, the other side, the downside. Well, not so much the downside of politics here, English style, but here's the downside of Mike Atherton, i.e. trapped. Trapped. Uh, look at that. Playing forward and stumped. You know, just hopeless, really. Look, I, uh, I think when a cricketer marries his cricket. It's a marriage that has no room for marriage, traditionally speaking. Yeah. The old style, i.e. Uh, I do, I do, for better or for worse, for the rest of my life with a person, you know, uh, with whom you might like to lie down with a lot and walk around with uh, during the daylight hours. I don't think that can work for cricketers. I don't, I don't, because I think it's too demanding, a lifestyle. Yes. You're always with, you know, 10 or 11 other blokes wandering around, putting on the gear, getting out in the middle, having a bash, coming in, having a few beers out in the tear, out in the town, out on the tour. That's the problem. Well, let's, uh, with that hanging in the air, deliciously yeah. in the air as it is, let's yeah. go to our street. Oh, really? Roy, a good thing about being in James Street, Northbridge, is you can get a, a bit of a distance on people. Uh, this bloke over here, Roy... He looks a bit furtive for mine. He does. Do you think he's got the right sort of keys? He's oh, he's going to get help. He's got loud trousers, and he's got, what, he's got his keys he's got in his, his port. Now, that's, uh... Peter and Paul, and they run the pin, uh, the pop-up fun and games leisure centre yeah. in uh, Oh, hello. James a bit Street. of nut work. <laughs> oh, a bit of nut work there it's from always, the kitty. Always good to lay on a bit of nut before yeah. breakfast. So tap on the head and a bit of nut work, and then you yeah. get the right key. In yeah. he goes. Now, if either of those blokes get in touch, they'll be winners. Very big winners. Mm. I like that nut work. Just, you know, just, just a bit of... <laughs> so straight on. Friendly badinage between yeah. a couple of mates. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, oh, very that's funny. Right. Yeah, and it was funny that Peter didn't have the right keys, and it was only lucky Paul was coming yeah. down the street that he had the right. Yeah. Otherwise, he'd look real stupid. Yeah, just waiting for the cops to arrest him. Mm. Just going to Mike and Susie for a minute, I don't think it was so much the fact that, uh, you know, Susie wanted to say I do. All she was interested in was a little bit of horizontal folk dancing. And yeah. uh, with Mike away in the West Indies, as he is at the moment for five or six months yes. at a time, yes. it made her uh, job uh, very, very lonely, keeping the home fires burning at Bamber Heath there. But, uh, Roy, we've got some footage of Australians on tour. Australians on tour by themselves having the time of their lives without their loved ones who are conveniently left at home. Roy, you've taken these footage, or this footage, yeah. uh, with your camcorder, the ABC camcorder. Take us through it, and who's that? <laughs> <laughs> stop, stop, stop with the gags, man. Look, uh, cricketers together. I, I think it's greater than the sum of its parts. When you get uh, one cricketer, you know, Mike Atherton style, just standing around, I, I don't think women are all that interested in them out on tour. Get two together and there's a bit of interest. Yes. Get a busload of them and it's, hello, sailor! It's just sex from, you know, right from the 
start at the front of the bus to the back of the bus. And here we, you can see them here, you know, just looking around, cruising, I yeah, call no, it. Yeah, cruising. cruising. This is the sort of social life they get up to. They stand around together, you know, one on the lurk, one on the look. Yeah. Big and large! Oh. Booty! Sorry, <laughs> That's Stumpy Moon, CIA agent for the Australian side. Yeah, so they don't really have time for the loved ones at home because, the, you know, the bed flutes are fully occupied when they're away on tour. And, you know, I can remember uh, touring many times with Keith Stackpole. Now, Keith, lovely family sort of man, but in those days, he was an absolute bloody tear away oh, in, yes, the, in the bed department. I mean, you just couldn't get him out of bed, uh, you know, even to play cricket uh, when we are on tour. He was the insatiable. And I think it was just the touring that did it. And there's no room in your world, in your cricketing world, and Dean Jones has found this out, you know, South Africa for far too long. There's just no room for other relationships. I mean, it's cricket first, cricket second, cricket third, and then whoever you bump into on the street, uh, you know, in between uh, stumps and, uh, you know, balled out. Roy, uh, who was foolish in the Atherton Susie do? You know, were they foolish to imagine they could uh, get it together for over such a long period of time? Was Mike foolish, you know, obviously not being honest with Suze? Was Suze led astray by the glamour of being related to a, uh, you know, horizontally folk dancing speaking uh, to a, an English cricket captain? I mean, where's the fault to lie? Or is it just, you know, as the Everly Brothers said it so well all those years ago, ain't it sad? sad to see. Good, good love, love go bad. bad. It's a tragic story. It is a tragic story, and uh, we might spend a little bit more time on this tragic story uh, later on. Indeed, yes. yes we'll later on. We'll be back with more life in a moment. Mm. Roy and HG now have a series of bum paintings for sale, including the conversation, the debate, I don't agree with, I don't agree with you. the lonely guy, and the holiday. The complete set of bum paintings is now available at all leading retailers. Hi, Craig Kelly here. I don't know much about art, but I know what I like. And I like that bum stuff. It talks to me. And the bums, well, it's the only art I'll ever buy. On this sporting life, it's time to mind plane with Asia's only two internationally certificated masters of travel, H.G. Nelson and Roy Slaven, as we celebrate our Australia. Well, Roy, we're at the start of a story, start of an enormous story, the start of a story as big as Australia, because this is the cavern of the Endeavour. This is the main cavern of the Endeavour where two people stood supreme. The big man himself, Cookie, and of course his offside of the botanist, uh, Sir Joseph Banks. It was out of this window that Banksy first grokked the guy me lily. It was out of this very window that he pour, pulled in his first Port Jackson shark and wondered how the buggers bred. But Roy, it must bring back very many memories for you to be sitting on Banksy's bench. This was Banksy's bench. Banks was a, was a fop. Banks was uh, given to snuff, given to substances, and he'd sit here and dream and bag Captain Cook for not... Uh, you know, for not giving him enough food, for not providing him uh, with the circumstance to which he felt he was due. So there are many arguments in here. You know, Banks would, you know, pull a fish in and say, cook it, Cookie, that sort of gear. And Cookie would get upset and storm up, you know, above decks and uh, bag, uh, bag Banksy to the rest of the crew. But a tremendous area this, the great cabin, uh, sorry, the great cabin, the nerve centre. And we should move on to where they um, slept, mucked about in the night oh, hours. Oh, yeah, OK, over this way. Right, now you watch your head. You come through here. This is where this is where Cookie got on the on the on the nod. Now you come in here. There's plenty of room. Don't worry. Yeah, there's heaps of room. Come on through. He would have had. He would have had. Yes, come on in. In your car. His bunk was along here, so he could lie down. Well, bugger, I'll lie down. Show you how he was. This would have been how Cookie was an enormous man, well over six feet, and he'd lie here with a bit of a line coming through tied to bits of his anatomy that uh, gave him maximum enjoyment, especially if he caught a flat end. Uh, he was that sort of bloke. And uh, he'd wake up in the morning and say, oh, Banksy, there you are. Well, I've got a terrific idea, old man. Why don't we, you know, sail a little bit further south or a little bit further north? But this is where he slept. Very, very comfortable. Very, very, you know, bigger than you'd think. Oh, yes. Yeah, so once you get a silly posturepudic in here, it's, it's yeah. heaven on a stick. Yeah. Not so, enough out here. Right. Now, I don't know if we can do this, but let's go back out through here. Come on, let's come. And I'll show you where, where bend over Banksy was meant to, uh, meant to uh, spend the uh, nocturnal hours. Don't worry about these legs, these are just tourists in the way. Don't worry, off you shoot. In here. This was bend over spot. This was bend over spot. Dark as buggery. Dark yeah, as that buggery. That bend over. Yeah, try and get in. I don't know what you're going to see, but not we much room. In here. Yeah. So you can see why bend over banks moved out yeah. to sleep in the big room. 
in here. And put it cooking into the closet over yeah. there. Now let's go, let's go on deck, okay? And so, of course, Roy, after a night downstairs on the silly posturepedic in the cramped conditions, having eaten a flathead for breakfast, you come up on deck and you survey the scene. You're miles from nowhere, you haven't got a bloody clue where you're going except for the genius of Cookie's head up here, working away with the charts and so on. You've got Bendover urging you to go forwards faster and faster and faster. You hit Australia, you don't know whether to turn left and right. Thank God they turned right when they hit Australia. But it's tremendous. It must bring back many, many memories for you, Roy. Well, I've done a lot of work on Cook. Cook would come out, he's a very arrogant sort of bloke. He'd come out on deck and it was orders, you know. Yeah. I've asked you, what the bloody hell are you up to? Yeah. Enough of that, leave That's it alone, crashing. give it a rest, had enough of you, what are you looking at? Get on with it, don't bugger me about. That's yeah. the sort of captain he was. Then he'd he go up the back here and have a think, wouldn't he? He'd That's think right. about the big issues. He'd think about the issues about whether Banksy was right about the Port Jackson breeding in one of those funny eggs and all yeah. that sort of stuff. He'd think about the guy near Lily that Jacko had, uh, that Ben David cited just a bit earlier. And then he'd come and stand up here yeah. and just have a look, wouldn't he? He would. And wonder what the bloody hell was going on. He would, he would. It's a terrific uh, replica, really. Uh, you know, I'm not a, well, I am a bit of a stickler for detail, really. These masts aren't terribly accurate. Uh, they would have used uh, maybe hewn pine or oak in the old days. These are laminated Oregon. But if you're prepared to overlook those sort of small, well, it, enormous defects, it's a terrific link with Australia's past. That's Australia. <laughs>